going to change people's lives. We're going to talk about hanging up the cleats. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hung Up Cleats. How's everyone doing? Hope your week has been fantastic. Um, I have, you know, been busy, and we just had CMA Fest here in Nashville, so it was a very long weekend. Um, I literally took off of work on Friday, and I waited in a line to see some of the performance. I did see, like, some pretty good performances. I saw John Party. I'll get to that in a second. I saw Old Dominion, uh, Brad Paisley. I did miss Dirk Bentley because I was still waiting in the freaking line. I love Dirk Bentley. Um, but, yeah, so literally I took off of work so I was like, oh, I'll go to CMA Fest on Friday, whatever, and I waited in a freaking line for six hours. I didn't get in until 7 o'clock. I started waiting in line at 1. Oh my gosh, my body hurt so bad just from standing. Um, I felt like I played 18 holes. Um, yeah, so anyway, it was fun. And then I got sick, so that was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so super fun. And then the next day, it was actually really fun. I en- My friend ended up getting a table, and I met some cool people. So that was fun. But, um, oh, back to John Party, though. He was so trashed. Oh, was he? He walked on stage obliterated. Yeah. He led with happy birthday. <laughs> it sounds like a joke. It's not a joke. Who he was literally he singing happy birthday to. He was just like, any birthdays in the room? And then <sighs> like and he literally led his set with happy birthday. I was like, bro, what the hell is going on? He also sang a Christmas song. We were, we were like, dude, what are you doing? And then he was singing songs that weren't his song, which I know, like, artists do that sometimes if they, like, helped write it. Yeah. So that's a little more fair, but we were just like... What's going on? Literally, like, glassed over eyes. We were like, damn, dude. Anyway, so that was my weekend. Yeah, I've gone to CMAs every year since eighth grade, but this year I was like, you know, I've gone every year, like... Tickets are expensive. Like, I don't know if I'm actually going to go to the Nissan concert. And then, for, I don't go Thursday, which I wasn't really faced by, but it was a good lineup, but I wasn't like, oh, I wish I was there kind of vibe. And then I get a call from my friend Eric, and I don't answer, and because I was, like, doing something, and he was like, Sophie, call me right now. And I was like, okay, like, is everything okay? And I pick up, and he's like, hey, got an extra ticket tonight. Want to come to CMA Fest with me? And I'm like... Oh, absolutely. So I go to CMA Fest with my friend Eric. It was super fun. It was Miranda Lambert played. Um, Hardy played. Oh, I love Hardy. Yeah. I've never, okay, I'll, I'll get to that. But I've never seen, like, I've never heard any of Hardy's songs or seen him play. We'll, we'll get to that experience. But who is the other big headliner? I'm trying to think. Um. Oh, Keith Urban. Keith Urban mm. was my favorite. He was great. I love him. He comes into Lululemon all the time, and so Sophie's actually met him. Yeah, that was crazy, and he was so sweet when I met him, so it just, like, made me like him, be more of a fan even more. Like, he was at the cash, cash one time when I was at the cash register, and I was like, I don't want to be that girl, but I am such a huge fan of your music, and <laughs> I love it. And he was like, thank you so much. Like, he was so sweet. And so his genuine. Wife, yeah, his wife was cheesing Nicole Kidman. Like, what is it? Was it? So cute. What do you say? Like, so at Lulu, like, we always ask, like, what's your email or what's your phone number to, like, pull up their profile? Like, did you ask? Or well, I've checked out Nicole Kidman before and had no idea it was her. And I... I I'm, like, looking at her, and I'm, like... She looks mm, familiar. She looks familiar. I don't really know. And then I, like, look up, and everyone in, like, all of our coworkers are looking at me, like... <laughs> and I'm, like... And you're, like, this know. is someone yeah. famous. Who is yeah, it? I didn't know, and I was, like... I kind of giggled, and I was, like, do you have a phone number with us? And she kind of laughed, and she was, like, no. <laughs> and she was with her two little girls, and I was, like, okay, we just have to ask. And then we... It was right when we got... You know how... When you check out at Lululemon, if you're on our end checking someone out, it asks this question, like, would your guest like a shopper? And it was brand new when 
I checked out Nicole Kidman. Like, we used to not have to ask if they wanted a shopper or not, but it clicks, like, yes or no. And I asked, and, like... A shopper is a bag. Yeah, Like, the little bag. bags we have. Yeah. So, when I was, like... And we kind of had to give a little explanation right when it was happening, because everyone was, like, why are you asking me if I want a shopper? Of course I want a shopper. So, I was, like, yeah. yeah, like, we just have to ask now for sustainability purposes. She was, like, sustainability purposes? I love that. And I was, like, <laughs> oh, Nicole Kidman loves the environment. Like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny but yeah Keith Urban was awesome and then Miranda Lambert actually brought out Avril Lavigne and they oh. said Scare Boy and I was freaking out Me oh my god! screaming that's it that's so cool it was so sick I love that and yeah Hardy came around I actually ended up really liking Hardy but the first song he sang it was literally like screamo I don't know what was going on I don't know if he was drunk or what he what was, do you mean it I thought it was an emo band it was like screamo he was screaming when he's he more that. like punk rock country like he's more yeah. like rock country but then after the concert I went back and listened to his music and it didn't sound like that at all and at the concert when he played it was only that first one song and everyone in the crowd's like looking around at each other like is he okay like what's going really on? yeah but I ended up liking, like, a bunch of his songs and added him to my playlist. But the first song, I was like, who is this guy? Yeah, I, I like his song, yeah. Truck Bed. Yeah, that um, one's good. That one's a banger. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it was super cool. And then I had hit tickets for Sunday, but I had more important things. Are you kidding me? No. Okay. Since you just told me what the more important thing was, pit tickets... I'm giving you shit for that. Okay, just, okay, think about it in my perspective. I've been to CMA Fest all four days every year since eighth grade. I okay, see, these, I have, I've never been. I have seen these artists every single year, and when it come, came down to the more important thing, like, we might have to edit this out. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, but that was that. But yeah, it was so much fun. Um, next year, I definitely want to probably go all four days since I didn't go this year, but... Hopefully, they'll just be given to me and Mary next year. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, Taking a little pause. So we're on live right now on TikTok. <laughs> and there's just fu- – these questions are always so funny. First off, can I have your snap? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your dental routine? <laughs> um, I brush my teeth brush for my two teeth. minutes. Floss. Do you floss? We literally have the same – we literally have the same toothbrush. So she was just peeing in mine's way. Do you floss? Not as much as I should. No. I don't yeah. think yeah. anyone flosses, except yeah. for my boyfriend. My boyfriend is like, like, he does it as much as you're supposed to. I'm like, I've Jeez. never met someone. Yeah. I, unless I get something stuck in my teeth or I'm feeling, like, super cleanly. <laughs> this one's funny. I cheated on my short 6'3 BF for his 6'8 friend, LOL. Always know your worth. If he's under 6'6", six, six, it's a huge ick, TBH. I mean... I don't think I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, maybe, like, if he's under 6 foot. If you're under 6'6", six, six, you're a short king. And then, last good question was, who is most likely to get arrested and for what? This is not a Q&A podcast. I just saw that these questions most online. Most get arrested? I don't feel like either of us get arrested. I feel like I'm more likely. To get arrested? Yeah, I just feel like I do dumb shit. I feel Maybe. like you're the you would be the first to be like, Mary, no. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. I feel like I could so see you getting like feisty in a situation. I would be like you'd be like and I'd be like, Mary, no. <laughs> it's not the time, not the place. Enough about our weekend. So today we're gonna talk about something that hit a little close to home for both of us, both recently and our entire lives. And I feel like it will for a lot of people. We are going to talk about positive and negative self talk. Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> we're like spirit fingers. I didn't know if it was like I didn't know what sound effect I would have with that, but that's what came out. Yeah, that's so, fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I feel like this is, um, definitely being more talked about now, um, than it used to be because I just feel like growing up, I never heard, I mean, I guess sometimes, but everyone would just talk shit about themselves all the time. Like, 
and my mom would do it and like you know like I just feel like it just like wasn't talked about we became super normalized to like talk yeah upon and it's like if you're messing up then it's like what the fuck Mary like you know like that's just not and like that's not even in my vocabulary anymore like if something happens like and you know every now and then I do it and I catch myself I'm like no don't say that like um so and I feel like this is a huge topic with athletes because I just feel like your performance is so heavy on Absolutely. like how you're feeling and how you're like you feel about your self-worth and um it's like very closely tied to like the kind of person you are and or not kind of person you are but just like your worth in life Definitely. um and so like I had a lot of negative self-talk when I was playing my sport and even like when I like down to when I was like seven years old which is like really unhealthy but you know at that level you're competing against the best and I would just be like like I would just call myself like stupid stuff you know as a seven-year-old I'd be like what the heck Mary like like you suck and like or just like or if someone asked me after a round like oh how did you play today and I was like oh I just suck at golf like, I would say that all the time, and that's probably held me back a lot. It, yeah, and I feel like it kind of even goes in a, like, it's literally a vicious cycle because it's, like, how you talk affects your game or, like, what you tell yourself affects how you're playing and how you're feeling and stuff, but then it's, like, also how you played and how you practice affects what you think. So it's just this vicious cycle constantly going, and you just, you gotta, you gotta think about it in the perspective of if you throw something positive in there, it's going to come back around. So if you throw something negative in there, it's going to come back around. So it's just going to go in a circle. It's going to be negative. It's going to have negative repercussions. It's going to be positive. It's going to have positive repercussions. What was your internal dialogue like when you were playing in a game? See, my, I never had negative self-talk or like, even really time to think about something other than what I was doing in the moment in the game. Like, that's why I fell in love with soccer, because it was anything going on in my life at the time. Like, it was out the window, out of my thoughts, all I was thinking about putting the ball in the back of the net and making sure the other team didn't score type thing. So, like, if I would have a bad game, it would really be more after the game. I'm like, dude, why did you do this? Or why did you do that? Like... And especially as a center back, like, you had to have a short memory. Like, you make a mistake. Because it's you're just, like, si- right yeah. next to them. Yeah, if you're sitting there thinking about it, it's going to affect your whole game. So it's like, okay, bad pass, whatever. Let me get the easy next two passes, and then we'll build up. You know, it's just building your confidence constantly up. Yeah, the so this is a pretty cool comparison because soccer, I feel like, like you don't, when you're watching it, you don't feel like it's fast paced. Yeah. But, like, there's a lot more sports that are a lot slower paced than soccer. And, like, if you even think about it, like, you could even argue that, like, football is slower than soccer. Yeah. Because you have, like, one play, and then it's, like, and if you fuck up that play, you have until the next play to think about it. And then if you, like, if the ball, if you turn over the ball, and so say you're an offensive player and you just fucked up, the ball's turned over and now your team's on defense. Now you're sitting on the sideline thinking about what you just did until there's another turnover. Yeah. I also and think, like, people don't even realize, like, when I was playing, like, I mean, it kind of looks a little bit slower, but it's, like, even if you're not on the ball, you're thinking, okay, where can I position myself to be in the best position for if the ball was to come to me? And then as a center back, you're kind of the one that controls the back. So it was, like, I'm constantly having to talk to my teammates and, like, tell them yeah. what to do and move them around. So it's just... Yeah, so, like, I just feel like golf is, like, such an interesting comparison to that because you're alone, unless your coach is walking with you. But you're alone, you, you hit one shot... And you have to wait a good five minutes until you hit the next one. So it's like you hit a shot. You have to think about literally every single shot. So if you had a bad shot, it's like ingrained in your head for the next however minutes, many minutes. You can't do anything to like distract yourself. Yeah. Right. And then, and but it's just like all you can do is think about okay, well, what can I do to fix it, and like how am I going to hit this next shot to save the hole. So there's just, like, a lot of internal dialogue with golf that I feel like is really hard. Um, And I feel like those other sports that where you just have to bounce back so quickly, I wouldn't say is easier, but it's a lot easier to kind of get through the game and reevaluate after. 
rather than like if you're on the golf course, it can destroy your whole round just by overthinking about, you know, if you have a compilation of a couple bad shots, that can be in your memory and that can like ruin your day. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and I kind of always feel like too, like if I was like, it really is how you talk to yourself. I would be like, I'm going to have the best practice. I'm going to grind. I'm going to do this. And I would. But if I woke up and I was just kind of like, oh, I'm tired. I've got mm. class. I'm tired from weights. Then it carried over into practice. And it even like, it's a domino effect too. If your teammates are thinking that, acting like that, it comes on to you. If you're thinking that, acting like that, it comes on to them. It's just. Yeah. It is, I don't know, I had a club coach my junior and senior year, loved him, little Scottish man, I still talk to him, same as Coach Allie, but he was so big on positive reinforcement, and he was one of my most impactful coaches, and I remember I got, like, benched my sophomore year, because I had a really shitty high school coach my first three years, and my club coach came to the game. So I was remember being mortified that my club coach was there, and I didn't play, and I remember after the game, I was thinking, oh, what is he going to say to me? He stayed to talk to me, and he was like, screw that coach. You were the best player out there. You should have been playing, and it was just like some nice little validation, and it was just always such positive stuff for him like if I ever was like oh I should have played a better ball here oh I should have done this he was like don't say that what did you do well yeah right I feel like a coach's mindset can change so much too um like I like coach O at uh LSU he would always talk about how he's like I don't get on the Twitter like I don't get on the Twitter and there's so many athletes that also like delete their social medias during the season and that just like they do that to eliminate the self the the negative talk because that's going to lead to them like having those thoughts in their head definitely and they always and like the athletes that we've interviewed and talked to they're like it's really nice to like look after the good games and see like people gassing you up and stuff but if you see one bad comment that's the one that's going to stick in your head oh absolutely not the negative one i mean not the positive one so um, I think that's very interesting, too. It's just yeah. all that what you're surrounded by and what you're, like, taking in. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like that kind of – that feeds into everything, too, in life as well. Like, think about celebrities. Like, they talk about – they read one hate comment, and that's what sticks with them out of their thousands and millions of fans. Like, yeah, I think – we it's talked about when we did our Riley Gaines episode, we actually had literally no negative repercussions from it, but it was super controversial, so we weren't sure how it was going to go. We were like, oh, we're gonna, not going to read the comments for this one, but we didn't get any bad ones. Yeah, everyone's like, I'm so proud of you for yeah. like doing something that like controversial and stuff, and so we yeah. got really good yeah. feedback I think that. we carried ourselves very well in that interview, and she's great. What a gem. I think another thing that goes into it is speaking things into existence like every single day me and mary are like when this happens never say if or if one of us says if we're always correcting each other like not if when when it happens and i don't know i got this super great compliment from one of my best friends from high school she was like and my mom always says it to me too she was like sophie anytime you say you're going to do something or something's going to happen you make it happen and it's gonna happen like I don't know I just have this mindset like if I want something I'm gonna go get it it's gonna happen whether it's a different route than I expected but I don't know yeah I uh, speak it into existence I did that with moving here I literally I so I came to visit Nashville like a long time ago and um like in high school no no it was college it was in college and I had a golf tournament here and I was just walking around and I was just like, I love it here. Like, this is so cool. Like I would love to live here. And my ex and that I I was dating him at the time. And I was like texting him and I was like, how cool would it be if I was a, if I was a sports reporter here and you played for the Titans, (laughs) I swear to God, I had this conversation or maybe I didn't text it to him, but maybe I was just kind of daydreaming about it. But I was like, how cool would that be? And I literally, I the day before he got, he signed, I was telling his godmother, I was like, she was like, oh, what are you going to do about jobs? Because it was around the time that I was graduating. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I just have like a couple cities that I have in mind that I would want to move. The top one's Nashville. 
he literally signed with the Titans the next day. And I was like, what the heck? Like, this is so crazy. And then even after we broke up, I literally, I remember being out on Broadway one day with my friends and I was walking out of Jason Aldean's. We were like day drinking. And I just like looked around and I was like, I completely made this up in my head and now it's real. It was kind of that way for me with Belmont. I always knew I was going to do my master's at Belmont, regardless of if I was still playing soccer or not. I was I was going to Belmont to do my master's, and I used to think, oh, I can't wait to come back home and live in the city and live that lifestyle, and here I am. And it's crazy, too, because I was so miserable at UAH. I kid you not, when I would come home for Christmas or summer, I applied to Belmont every single time i have applied to belmont like six times and got in every single time so when i came back home from tech and applied i was like i'm getting in they're probably tired of seeing my name by now but it just is crazy because i had like six acceptance letters because i was always like oh what if i come home and i just don't want to go back to uah and i never wanted to go back to uah but i always kind of had like my backup plan i was accepted into belmont just in case i decided i didn't want to go back to huntsville but i kind of manifested that for myself yeah it's so cool how that happens i literally was just listening to a call her daddy interview um with one of the old Vanderpump Rules people and she was like yeah like I like a long time because Alex asked how she felt about manifestation and you know this kind of stuff she was like well I've done it like I manifested my house like literally like I wanted a Spanish style house and she's like I'm pissed that I didn't dream of like a 10 million dollar house in Beverly Hills because I got exactly what I wanted I should have just asked for more (laughs) I was like, that's so funny. I love that. So, I mean, I think some people think it's crazy, and, like, to an extent it is a little delusional, but um, I just think there's still, like, concepts to it that make a lot of sense and that, like... Definitely. Yeah. I'm a pretty religious person, but I remember I had a friend tell me this a while back. She was like, you don't have these hopes and dreams just out of randomness and these desires. She was like... God has put these desires in your life for a reason. He put your desires there. Yeah, there but he is doesn't want to just grant you all these wishes. Like, he yeah. wants you to, like, teach you life lessons. That's why you're on earth. Like, yeah, exactly. you're not just here just for shits. Like, yeah, but he gives you all of these desires, and it's like, they're there for a reason. Like, that's why we all have different desires. He put them specifically for you to want for a reason, whether that for you or it's not for you you have that desire for a reason so I'm just like this is something I really want he's put that in my head for a reason so let me do whatever I can do that's in my control to make it happen obviously if it's God willing but like he put it there recently okay so I feel like I have always been very like I've like loved myself like I've been very obsessed with myself I'm very like into myself (laughs) (laughs) I'm in love with myself (laughs) um no I just I don't know I've always just like thought like I work really hard and so I just feel like I kind of owe it to myself to like think highly of myself like I work hard in the gym I work hard like I you know eat healthy I like make sure I like really take care of myself um I like take pride in being a good person and just like pouring into myself and others so I haven't really had that like like, when my friends are, like, I don't like myself, or I hate, I'm, like, ha Like, it never clicked with me. I never understood it. Um, and so, um, I feel like since graduating college and since, like, retiring from being an athlete, I've, like, experienced this a lot more. Um, partially because, like, I was in a relationship where he kind of, like, put down on me a lot um and it was just like very just like I'm better than you because he went to the NFL and then I like retired so I was just like I'm never gonna be I'm never gonna be as good because I'm not a professional athlete and I'm not on that big of a stage crazy you got cut a year later sorry (laughs) <laughs> let it out girl. I literally have the vulnerability I literally can't get through talking about him with being like sucks bitch you got cut <laughs> like ah uh, sorry that's just I need to be the bigger person that's my bad um so karma 
<laughs> so, oh, I'm waiting for a Karma baby Karma was your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a swifty, Literally. guys. I'm sorry. Literally. Okay, and so... <laughs> Um, I'll get to the healthy relationship in a second. So recently I've like had, and you know, after all that, whatever, I bounced back, whatever. Cool. Um, and then honestly, like starting this podcast really like boosted my confidence because it's like, I like also worked really hard to get all these skills to be able to make something like this happen. And it's like always something that I've really wanted to do. And all the positive feedback is just like fueling me. Like everyone's like, you're doing so good. I love listening to your podcast and Um, I just think all of those affirmations are just, like, huge for just, you know, working hard. Like, it's really nice to hear. Um, but I've, like, hit a lull recently because, like, I feel like I'm, like, kind of spreading myself pretty thin. And when I'm, like, not passionate about something, I, like, don't do very well And so I feel like there's a lot of things in my life where it's just, like, been a struggle. And, like, my the main thing is I get distracted very... Like, I've been getting distracted very easily. And then to top it all off, I went out on the lake the other day. And we took some photos. And I saw a photo of myself. And I was like, what the heck? Like, I've never been... Like, not to say I'm, like, oh, I'm not overweight. I, like... Not at all. Like, I I look fine. You're amazing. But I just saw a picture and, like, the angle, lighting, all of that. I had been drinking all weekend. I saw it and I was, like, I'm, like, chunky. And I just was, like, I was on the phone with my boyfriend. And my boyfriend, (laughs) he's so cute. I literally, I, I, like, said, I was, like, I don't like myself right now. And he was, like... Don't talk about my girlfriend like that. <laughs> yes, Tanner. Yes, Tanner. I know you're going to listen to this before <laughs> I do. So, yes, Tanner. <laughs> so, that's that's his thing. He said like every time I say something negative or, you know, you know, something I shouldn't say that's like not great, he's like, "Don't talk about my girlfriend like that." And I'm like, what a guy. Like, it's as if I'm a different person talking shit about his girlfriend, and he's like, don't do not do that. So that helps me a lot. But I just, like, that goes to show, like, I, I would consider myself a very confident person, and, like, probably a lot of people would back me up on that. And, like, even me, like, I just, there's just times where you just don't have your shit together. And, like, you just have moments where it's, like, you just can't, like, a lot's going on, and you just, like, can't catch up, and that's kind of what happened to me, and I just, like, kind of broke down, and I was, like, this is just not, not it, so. It's been my experience Absolutely. recently. That's kind of how I kind of felt during the school year. I had so much going on, and I was so overwhelmed. I felt like I'm a very competitive person. Like, I want to be the best at whatever I'm doing and be super involved and super focused, but it was, like, I felt like I was just mediocre. I remember having this conversation with my mom. I felt like I was just mediocre in everything. I was, I mean, I felt like I was mediocre in school. I ended up making the dean's list. But I felt like I was mediocre in school. I felt like I was mediocre for the podcast. I felt like I was mediocre at work. I felt like I was mediocrely involved with my friends. Like, it was so hard to keep that balance. But that's just how I felt. Because then when I would talk to other people, they were like, what are you talking about? Like, that makes no it's sense. It's, like, all in your head. Yeah, it's all in your head. But I kind of, mine was kind of opposite. Like, when I was playing soccer and I was at UAH, like, I feel like I have never been a super confident person. I've always struggled with liking myself and loving myself. And I feel like just this year I've really started to be who I'm supposed to be and I'm confident in that. And I think it stems back to the whole identity thing I thought the only thing cool about me or the only reason people really liked to be around me or hang out with me because oh I was Sophie I played soccer you know and then once I got out of now we're Sophie and Mary and we have a podcast yeah (laughs) once I got out of college I was like you know I'm pretty cool like without soccer like I'm a pretty cool girl and it was like (laughs) 
<laughs> so interesting. Like, all of these people, like, wanted to be my friend and, like, wanted to hang out with me. And, like, I had a bunch of people that, like, I surface level knew at Belmont that were reaching out and they were, like, want to get dinner, want to get lunch. And, like, they wanted to be my friend. And I was, like, this is kind of interesting. Like, all of these people want to be my friend. Like, I must be pretty cool. And then I started <laughs> thinking about it. And, like, once I went through the whole identity crisis and realized I was so much more than a soccer player, I was, like... I'm a cool person, and I feel like my confidence has just grown this year, and every time I see someone that I haven't seen in a really long time, they're like, you are glowing, you are thriving, like, what did you do? And I'm like, I have no idea, like... I don't play soccer anymore. I, yeah, I don't play soccer anymore, like, that's not my identity, that's not where my mental health goes, but yeah, I remember... I saw my friend Keely, she was in Nashville for the weekend, and she, like, came to a bar to, like, come meet me and say hi, and she was like, post-soccer Sophie is glowing. I don't know what you're doing, but, like, keep it up, because you are a different person, and I'm so proud of you, and I was like, oh. just really hits, especially from people that you, like, look up to. She was, like, she's a few years older than me, and I admire her a lot, so. We'll have her on the pod. Yeah. Keely's going on the pod. Keely, if you watch this, shout out. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I love, like, seeing the growth, like, within myself and, and everything because I'm just, like, a completely different person. Like, yeah. not that I didn't like the old versions of myself like I did. I just think it's so cool, like, how you evolve and how, like, you pick up certain things that you, like, take take with you and then you leave certain things behind about your past that doesn't don't serve you anymore. But they taught you a lesson. That's what I think is really cool. Yeah. Body image specifically with girls is so hard, though, because... I have not met a single girl that doesn't have problems with body image, which is crazy. Like, even models. Like, you hear about models telling their stories and talking about how they had eating disorders because they thought they were fat. Like, all of these different things. And it's just like, I remember one of my friends always says to me, or used to always say to me, I want you to talk to yourself like you would talk to me. She was like, I wish you could see yourself how I see you. And now I think of that all the time, like when my friends are talking bad about themselves or they're feeling insecure about something. I'm like, I wish they could see themselves how I see them. And then I'm like, wait, like I need to start looking at myself how they look at me. Like, mm -hmm. You need to look at Mary like I look at Mary, and like Tanner looks at Mary, and like don't I don't talk shit about my girlfriend. Yeah, like don't don't talk shit about my friend and my co-host. <laughs> don't talk about her like that. That's rude. No, yeah, no, I agree. I think that's like a great way to look at things. Like your friends are always gonna like tell you tell you how it is, and um, especially the real ones. Like if you really do have stuff to work on they'll tell you if you're doing great they'll tell you and I just think that's like a great a great mindset to have instead of getting in your head and tearing yourself down over nothing absolutely I feel like I have a lot of nights where I like kind of break down and I like spiral and then the next morning I'm like what the heck was that like I literally don't even I was being so crazy which not that it's invalid but yeah. Sometimes your brain does make you a little crazy. And Comparison gotta, is hard, too. You need to go to sleep. I think that comes from a lot of it. When you start comparing yourself. Comparison is the thief of all joy. Yeah. Comparison in anything kills. For instance, like, I follow, like... I follow my people I look up to, like celebrities and stuff on Instagram, but there was a point in time where I followed all of the Kardashians, and I literally went through my Instagram following and followed every single person that I was comparing myself to. So, yeah, so I am like follow, keep up yeah. with them and like be yeah. Like, so oh. I am followed all of the Kardashians. I was like, I'm never going to look like that. Like, I That's mean, they thousands have, of thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah, a lot of classes. work done and like. Sure, I could look like that one day, but I don't want to look like that one day. And I was like, so stop that's looking what, at uh, it. That's what Brianna Chicken Fry. Yeah. She's always like, like, um, you're something. You're not ugly, you're broke. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> you're not ugly, you're break, broke. Yeah. Look, you're not ugly, you're broke. Yeah. I feel like we should wrap it up there. You're yeah. not ugly, you're, you're broke. broke. <laughs> <laughs> at Brianna Chicken Fry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love this episode. Yeah. This is I feel like this one. was so uplifting. Yeah. This is a great one. This was this one was for the girls. Yeah. For the girlies. Um, and guys, too. Guys, too. I feel like this affects guys, too, but I feel like they just, like, don't talk about it as much. I feel yeah. like body image, definitely not as much, but... Yeah. 
Especially like in sports, I I'm sure it would do affect them I feel like too. with boys, I will say boys have, it's no secret that they have a extremely fast and high metabolism. I feel like a lot of like skinny boys that mm-hmm. can't gain weight are insecure about that. Like I remember like Josh Richards talking about that on a podcast episode, him not oh. being able to like gain weight and being insecure about that's it. That's how, that's time. how my little brother, uh, Jack, like he... He'll, like, go to Cane's at, like, 1 a.m. if he, like, knows he hasn't had enough calories because he's, like, very big into the gym and, like, yeah. he just eats and eats and eats. And he looks great now, but he has to eat, like, 4,000 calories a day to, like, maintain, like, any type of physique. Yeah. That's how my um, little stepbrothers are. They eat so much and, like, they've got muscle now, but when they were little, they would eat so much and could not gain any weight. They just were sticks. And I know... When they get to a certain age, they want to go from boy to man. It gets frustrating for a lot of yeah. guys. When it's they like can't the opposite wait. with girls, which is crazy. Yeah. That's so interesting. So opposite. I'm like, can we meet in the middle here? Can we yeah. all just be Can we all just be perfect? Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you for listening to this week's episode. We will include the merch link below again. Buy some stuff. I think, you know, I like it. It's not yeah. you should wrap some hung up cleats and give us a five star review yeah thanks for listening i hope you like this episode bye bye